Aghamazing! This is Service of Service TV. In our previous videos, we explored two different types of energy, which are sound and light energy, which also exist in form of waves. In this video, we are going to explore heat energy and how heat transfer can occur. Are you ready to learn? If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Do not forget to like, share, and comment hashtag Aghamazing. Let's go! Observe this scenario. What do you think will happen to the mag and the metal spoon after the woman fills the mag with boiling coffee? Correct! The mag and the metal spoon will feel hotter. But why did this happen? This happened because of heat transfer. Before we discuss how heat transfer occurs, let us first understand the concepts of thermal energy and heat. All forms of matter are made of atoms and molecules. These atoms and molecules are always in motion and they have kinetic energy. The energy that these moving or vibrating particles possess is called thermal energy. To define, thermal energy refers to the energy possessed by an object or system due to the movement of particles within the object or the system. When thermal energy is transformed, heat is always produced. The energy that is transferred from the boiling coffee to the mag and metal spoon is called heat. Heat is the flow of thermal energy. Heat is also an energy in transit. It is the energy that transfers from a body with a higher temperature to a body with a lower temperature. The transfer of energy is due to temperature difference of objects. People usually thought that the heat and temperature mean the same thing, but these two concepts are different from each other. Temperature refers to the relative hotness or coldness of an object. It refers to the measure of the average energy of the motions of the molecules in the substance. It can be measured using a thermometer. The three common scales that are used in measuring temperature are Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. The SI unit for heat is Kelvin. Meanwhile, heat is the total energy of the motion of the molecules of a substance. The SI unit for heat is Joules. The natural flow of heat is always from a hot substance to a cold substance or from a substance with a higher temperature to a substance with a lower temperature. This is the reason why the spoon and mug became hotter in our previous examples. The heat flowed from the boiling coffee which has a higher temperature to the mag and metal spoon which have a lower temperature. The transfer of heat will stop when both objects reach the same temperature. Let us now discuss the different methods of heat transfer. As stated a while ago, heat transfer is the process where in thermal energy is exchanged between two objects due to their temperature differences. The three methods of heat transfer are conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction takes place between objects that are in contact with each other. This means that heat energy is directly transferred through a material. This method of heat transfer is most effective in solids. We can observe this transfer of energy when cooking. When the bottom of the pan is placed under the fire, the heat energy from the fire will be transferred to the pan that is why it becomes hot. As the pan becomes hotter, the heat energy will be transferred to the food that is placed on it. This is the reason why the food gets to cook and also become hot. What do you think is the reason why cooking pans are made of metals? Correct! because they are good conductors of heat. Conductors are materials that allow thermal energy to readily flow through them. Metals like silver, 
copper, steel, and aluminum are good conductors of heat. On the other hand, materials that transfer heat poorly are called insulators. This is the reason why most cooking utensils have handles made of plastics, rubber, or wood. This is to prevent heat from flowing to the handles which prevent us from being burned. The next method of heat transfer is called convection. Convection is most effective on fluids. Fluid is any material that flows. Examples of fluids are liquids and gases. Convection is the method of heat transfer through the circulation of liquid and gas. It is the transfer of energy by the rising or sinking of matter due to density differences. A good illustration of convection is boiling water inside the container. When the water molecules at the bottom of the container were heated, they become less dense. Since they became less dense, they will now rise. On the other hand, the relatively cooler and denser molecules from the surface begin moving downwards or start sinking. When these molecules are already on the bottom, they will start to heat again and become less dense and eventually will rise again. This cycle will create convection currents. Due to these convection currents, the boiling water ensures that the food being cooked is also in motion. This prevents the food from sticking to the bottom of the container. Another example of heat transfer by convection is the rising of hot air above the flame and the moving down of air as it cooled down. The last method of heat transfer is through radiation. In radiation, heat moves through empty space such as the outer space from the sun to the earth. There is no medium like water, air, nor any solid material where heat can travel through. Radiation is the transfer of heat by means of electromagnetic waves. We feel the heat coming from the sun because of radiation. And that ends our discussion about heat and the different methods of heat transfer. In our next video, we are going to learn about electricity and the different types of charging processes. See you on our next science lesson! Agha amazing!